Flexport is a licensed customs brokerage and freight forwarder, and yet we've raised $100 million from companies who normally fund software companies. Uh, the, the $100 million has gone to building what is almost certainly the most sophisticated way to manage, track, communicate, uh, and really do everything that has to do with moving cargo. Uh, and our customers cannot pay us for this software. The only way they get access to it is by actually moving goods on our platform. Uh, so there's 350 people who are active at Flexport right now. There's actually about 400 on payroll. Uh, we're growing so quickly that we have 50 people who are in the process of onboarding training at various offices right now. Uh, so it's San Francisco headquartered. Uh, Hong Kong is our Asia headquarters, and Amsterdam is our Europe headquarters. And then we're open in Shenzhen, Atlanta, New York, LA. Uh, and the, the next one to open, where we're already licensed, is uh, Shanghai, followed probably by uh, Ho Chi Minh, and then, you know, God willing, Chicago. Uh, so, interesting thing to note top 25 freight forwarders actually have one thing in common uh, all of them were created before the internet. Uh, so even before the Netscape browser, before you had an AOL CD, uh, all of the 25 top forwarders in the world were created before that special day. Uh, so these are those folks. Uh, this is not a small amount of, of, of cargo moving or a small amount of revenue. Uh, these folks sum to about $100 billion a year in gross. Uh, you know, at a 20% margin, we're talking about two, you know, $200 or $20 billion a year in net revenue going to a, a group of companies who you know, luckily for us, and, and probably difficult for, for the customer, all founded before the internet existed. Uh, so that's, that sort of is the, the, the core premise of, of how we got into this whole thing, uh, and, and, and you know, sort of without knowing it, why we started building for what is almost undoubtedly the, the, the hardest problem uh, that, that software is trying to solve in, in logistics right now, which is international. Uh, there's, there's so many parties involved, there's uh, so many compliance risks of, you know, on, on, on all fronts, there's edge cases everywhere you look, uh, and when you look at point to point in the world, you end up with millions of combinations of all those compliance risks uh, and of all those rules to be followed. Uh, so it's, you can see why, why there haven't been new, new entrants in this space. It's an incredibly hard problem, and the companies that have built the infrastructure to solve it, uh, that infrastructure has value, and it's made them very durable businesses. Uh, so why do companies choose us? Uh, it, it's kind of crazy when you think about it to move, a, to move your cargo with Flexport. We are three years old. Uh, you know, we'll do about 20 million in sales this month, uh, you know, up from zero in May 2014. So that's pretty incredible growth, but compared to an Expeditors or a Kuninagel, why, why would you ever trust us to move your, your precious, precious cargo? Uh, and I think, that, you know, here, here are some of the, the beginnings of why people do it. Um, Number one is when, when you log into Flexport, you see a map of the world, uh, and this is your world that we've, we've loaded in all the information for you. Your world exists pre-designed. You log in, you see every factory, every DC, uh, every member of your team globally has access to this account. They have their own roles in the app, depending on if they're a receiver, an analyst, a finance role. Uh, but everybody logs in, they see this map of the world, they see all the different parties, they see icons for airplanes, boats, trucks, rail cars, uh, and they see their cargo moving in real time. It's color coded uh, so that you know anything that's in blue, Flexport has your back. It's moving without exception. It's moving on time. You are all good. You don't have to think about this anymore. If it's red, it basically means, uh-oh, an exception has occurred that's going to impact the delivery to your, to your facility. Uh, you can click in and find out more. Effectively, we, we've built Facebook for freight, um, where all the information is real time. Because we are actually the service provider, all of the parties involved are either directly working on our platform, so our, our Draymond are uploading docs directly to Flexport, for instance, uh, or they're integrated via API or EDI. Uh, so they're, unlike a software platform where you're, you're buying a visibility tool and then praying you can somehow get your data into it, uh, when you launch with us on day one, your map is live. Uh, everything's just there. It's all searchable in real time by SKU, by product name. You can misspell the name of your own product and we'll pull up in real time exactly how many of that SKU you have live in the supply chain, what it's costing you to land that SKU uh, anywhere in the world. You can run all kinds of analytics about how much carbon you're generating, where you're spending on your different lanes. Uh, and it's all free to the company, you know, to the now something like 2,000 companies who are moving their cargo with us. They don't, they don't pay anything for, for the platform. Uh, as you guys know, 
Freight forwarding is a human-delivered service. It is not a service that will ever be fully automated, at least in, in my opinion, because there's, there's too many edge cases, there's too much human judgment involved. Uh, and so all of our clients, you know, the, whether it's a, a small Amazon seller or, or whether it's you know, a, a Fortune 50, they all have a dedicated team of people. Uh, that that dedica dedicated squad sits in our offices around the world. Uh, they all work in our software. Uh, and they basically serve that customer end-to-end -end so that when you call into Flexport, your account automatically pops up on whoever's answering screen. It's always one of the same five, seven, ten, you know, depending on the size of your company. Always that same group of people answering. Uh, whether they're sitting in Hong Kong, Amsterdam, or San Francisco, they have your account information. There's no functional silos, air, ocean, domestic. It's all in the same app. So that when they pick up the phone to answer your question, they know exactly who you are, they know your supply chain, and they have all your data at their fingertips. Uh, and and that, that's been, I think, an important part of why we've, we've had some early success. We are not at all trying to eliminate the freight forwarder or customs brokers, you know, God forbid. Uh, these, these are vital services. Stringing together all this complexity, guaranteeing legal compliance, uh, these are functions that aren't going away. That you can never, you can, there's no amount of code that's going to that's gonna eliminate those needs. Uh, so by, by giving all of our customers these dedicated squads, as we call them, and just delivering the service through software, but, but ultimately that giving them dedicated humans that they can contact 24 hours a day, uh, I think that's let people sleep a little bit more easily trying out sort of the new kids on the block. Um, and so the last thing is, is transparent and fair pricing. Uh, we, we came into this industry as relative newbies. Uh, we were shocked to see that a, an invoice for a freight shipment across 10 different vendors might have 40 different line items, and those 40 different line items were never the same across those 10 vendors. Uh, so we standardized our rate cards. Uh, we tried to make it as transparent as possible for our customers what they're going to pay. Every invoice we send has the original quote amount on it. You can graph. Basically, you can see on a graph inside of your Flexport account how, how much deviation there was graphically from what we quoted you versus what we invoiced. Uh, we, are, we are dedicated to being the most transparent forwarder in, in the business. Uh, we, we believe in making money by driving value for the, for the customer, not by necessarily extracting the most profit possible. Uh, so how does this whole thing work? Why is this different than, than GT Nexus, or why, why is this different than, than any of the solutions that have been tried before? Uh, we build for everybody in the chain. So although our customer technically is the shipper here in the US or Europe in 99% of cases, we think of everybody who's going to interact with Flexport software as a customer. Uh, because if the parties executing the physical service aren't excited to work in your platform, if they just want to work in their same offline ways, you can't drive any of the value that we're all aspiring to drive. You know, we've all sat in these sessions over the last two days aspiring to be better, aspiring to digitize, aspiring to have control over our, our supply chains and data. Uh, and, all, and all of those are our, our lofty aspirations, but if the people actually moving the goods don't participate in this vision, if, if you've made their lives harder, you're going to find the goal tends to keep moving away from you. Um, so what I mean by that is, you know, sure, our buyer here in the U.S., the Flexport experience can begin at PO. They can either create the PO in their ERP or on our platform. We give away PO management for free. It's beautiful. It's searchable. You can drag and drop things into a, into a purchase order, uh, or you can just feed it in from SAP or Oracle or wherever. Uh, so that's, that is who we built for originally. Then we realized, look, these manufacturers at Origin, they're our customers too. Um, if we can get them creating the commercial docs directly on Flexport instead of creating commercial invoices in Excel, that's data entry our team doesn't have to do, whether it's to clear customs, whether it's to give SKU level visibility. There's all this work that theoretically the vendor's already doing that if we can give them tools to make it easier, they'll just do that part of the work for us and we'll increase our data integrity by, by leaps and bounds. Uh, so they're really a customer too, although they don't, they don't technically pay us. So when a, when, a vent, when a manufacturer logs into Flexport, they've been invited by their customer. You know, their customer logs into their Flexport account and says, invite my vendor. That vendor gets an invite, they create their account, and we, we, we are hosted behind the firewall in mainland China, so everything's pretty snappy. Uh, they, they onboard their manufacturer, and their manufacturer then gets a Flexport account where they get their own map, and on that map they can add their customers. And so the, the world actually has value for them inside of Flexport beyond just solving their customer's need. It actually makes it, it, makes it easier for them to make bookings. It makes it faster for them to create POs. We load in all these templates for them, so that instead of having to manually type in, here's the origin address, here's the destination address, they just drag and drop from their templates, they select the number of containers, they accept that, that yes, we fulfilled the PO in completion, they hit book, uh, and it automatically then feeds into our system. Uh, so, so they're our customer. Uh, the truckers on both sides of the ocean, 
if, if you know, we, we target 100 to 500 unit power, power unit operators who are willing to use our dispatch and document software, uh, we basically agree, we, we promise you a certain amount of growth over the next 12, 18, 24 months. You then dedicate a team that's going to work inside of the Flexport dispatch app. And what that means is our customers get real-time visibility on when trucks are being dispatched, when loads have been dropped, and our, and our truckers actually get a little bonus for uploading docs directly through our app. Uh, so all of these little things sum up to your data coming in in real time and actually being valid. Uh, so they're our customer. Uh, Customs is obviously our biggest customer. You know, as a, as, a, as a company that's gotten a lot of press and raised a lot of capital, you're, you have to be pretty aware that priority number one is compliance. It's the one thing that can burn the house down. Uh, so from day one, we, you know, we're licensed customs brokerage. Uh, our head of customs on the, on the East Coast uh, is this guy Jay Gerard. He ran customs for Burberry. On the West Coast, this guy Jason Gispin. He was one of the original employees at Expeditors. Somehow didn't realize what a, what a, what a rocket ship it was and left. But uh, now he, he became the chairman of CB Fank, which is basically the West Coast uh, Customs Brokers and Forwards Association. Uh, so he's been involved basically since day one. Our, our director of compliance, Mike Backbull, uh, he, was the, um, he, he was basically the CEO of, of Linden in the U.S., now basically been our NVO qualifier since the beginning. Uh, so Customs is our customer as well. Uh, and and we've, we actually submitted a, a, a software update to the U.S. Customs denied party list because it turned out they weren't using uh, the correct search logic such that if you searched for Osama bin Laden with an O, it would show up that he was fine to ship to because they had it in their system as Osama bin Laden with a U. So we told them, guys, if you update the search protocol this way, that won't happen anymore. Um, we're trying to build for the carriers. And right now, the thing we're doing for the carriers that, that they like the most is just being consistent. Uh, we try to have a 95% delivered containers rate to the, to the, to the lines. Uh, what that means is a typical forwarder is booking at 120% and they're delivering 80% of cargo. Uh, our goal is to book at 100% and deliver 95% or better. Uh, so right now, we, you know, the carriers are our customer as well, even though we, we send them big checks every month. Uh, and then obviously, again, customs here at destination. Uh, and the, and the, the trucking uh, scheme that I described is, is live both at origin and destination. So here, here's a couple screenshots of the app. Uh, if we had more time, I could do a full demo. Or if, if, I don't, there's probably no actual shippers here, but if, if any of you guys actually ship cargo and you want to see a live Flexport demo, please call us. We'll be happy to set one up. Uh, on the left, you basically see the Facebook page for any one of your given shipments. You can see the activity feed, which might include pictures. It allows you to communicate with your team. It allows your team to communicate without Flexport involved. Uh, for our larger customers, we, you know, our goal is to eliminate thousands or tens of thousands of email a year. Um, there's a stat that we, that's pretty amazing for BCG that something like 40% of all emails and logistics are just one form or another of asking the question, where's my stuff? Uh, so by, by giving people, by giving your whole org access to this platform, the idea is we eliminate a lot of the communication, but the communication that's still essential, it happens on platform at the shipment or product or PO level, uh, so that you all of a sudden have this, this real accountability built into your org where it's always clear who is, who is, who is saying what, where responsibility handed off, et cetera. Uh, uh, you can see the tabs here are activity, quotes, so any quotes that, that, that basically help generate this shipment are stored here. All the docs are stored here. Uh, you can see on the right is basically the Facebook page for one of our clients' SKUs. Uh, you know, we're, we're, a, we're a licensed brokerage, so this is all dummy data, obviously. Uh, but the, the whole idea is that we're, you know, it's classic consumerization of the enterprise, and all of this stuff is available via, via search. So if you were, you know, if, if somebody on your West Coast procurement team wanted to know how many large polo shirts existed in the whole supply chain or when they were going to be back in stock in the D.C. or whatever, they would search polo shirt large at the search bar up top, uh, and it, basically they would then be able to, to go right to this page for the large polo shirts. They can see how many are moving, which shipments contain them, what it's costing you to land them in various places, etc. cetera. Uh, so accessing one source of truth for the whole company, this is sort of the crux of it. Um, if, if you have one vendor that's moving all the cargo, both generating and tracking all the data and giving visibility, and your whole company is working on that platform, and everybody who's delivering service for you is on that platform, we for the very first time have what we can call truth. Um, there is no question about if data is accurate. There's no question about who is responsible for a given part of a move. Uh, everybody's working on the same system. Everything's time stamped. All the communications here. Everything's searchable. Uh, there's, there's just there by definition is, is reduced finger pointing, uh, and it just sort of allows you to focus on on actually on getting real shit done uh, versus figuring out who did what in your supply chain. Uh, as we as we kind of touched on in the beginning. Uh, we are absolutely not a software-based freight forwarder in the sense that the only way to get in touch with us is through the app. Uh, 
it's, it's so obvious that a freight forwarder is a partner to a customer. You know, I'm sure a lot of you guys in the room are forwarders. Uh, and and the, ones, you know, the, the lesson we all learned is that for the client, this cargo is the lifeblood of their business. Um, unfortunately, like, unlike software companies, we do not have annual contracts or multi-year contracts. We get paid shipment by shipment for the most part, and, and our clients can fire us on every single move. Uh, so if that means you need to have a direct conduit from your customer to the people executing that service, and those people need to be fully empowered to deliver for that customer without having to go up a big hierarchy to get approvals. So our dedicated squads that serve our customers are fully end-to-end -end autonomous units that include customs brokers, sales, ops, and everything that a customer would need to move their cargo. Uh, unless it's something really exceptional, that group can approve almost anything out of the box the customer can think of within the bounds of the law, because they are fully empowered to run their own piece of the business. Uh, and what that means for you guys as, as Flexport customers or potential Flexport customers, uh, you're, you're never talking to somebody like a, like a Comcast or Time Warner rep who desperately wants to help you, but doesn't have the data or the approval to do it. Uh, so I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with a metric called NPS, uh, Net Promoter Score. It's one of those things that uh, I, at first, when I heard of it, thought it sounded ridiculous. Uh, why would your clients ever respond to a survey that you send them every single month? Uh, and yet, people do. Uh, and so the way NPS works is that anything between a zero and an eight is basically, sorry, but anything between a six and an eight is considered a, a, a wash. It doesn't add anything to your score. Anything below a six is actually a negative. Anything eight to 10 counts towards your score. Uh, the idea is that then you can sum up, your, you sum up all the, the responses from your customers and you get an aggregate score between zero and 100. Basically, it can, it can, go, it can go negative too if your company's really in trouble. Uh, a, an incredibly well-run company like, like Apple is shooting to be in the 60s. Uh, we're, we are very fortunate that in our three years, our 30-day our, our, our trailing NPS right now is an average of 75. Uh, and we, we don't play any games here. We survey 100% of customers regardless of if we think they're happy or not. Uh, and it seems like so far they are extremely happy with, with this combination of, of service service and software in, uh, under one roof. Uh, I, I, you know, the whole thing about moving all of this data into the cloud is a little bit scary, and it should be. Uh, there's actually something very secure about having documents in a physical file cabinet. Uh, it's unlikely that anybody who truly wants to hurt your business is going to break in and open your cabinets and steal your docs. When you put everything in the cloud, you are taking some sort of risk. I think it's, it's a rational risk in 2017 in a world where we're understanding your data and having control of your data actually makes you a much more powerful business. But it's a risk you shouldn't take lightly. Uh, so, so we pay about $25,000 a month to a company called Hacker One that puts out bounty programs for hackers all over the world, to you know, basically good hackers, to try to find vulnerabilities in our system. Uh, we, we use uh, Amazon Web Services globally. So AWS right now is sort of considered the gold standard for cloud hosting. There, there is no cloud hosting platform, whether here or in Asia, that's more secure. Uh, and, and throughout Flexport, we have really stringent user roles and privileges. Uh, so that, for instance, you can create a receiving role in one of your warehouses where they can see all the cargo coming into their facility, but they can't see any commercial invoice values, they can't see any freight prices, uh, they, you know, they basically can't see anything sensitive. Or, for instance, you can create a finance role where all they can do is make payments, but they can't make any changes. Basically, they can't reroute cargo, because why, why would you want your, your payments team doing that? Uh, and, and all of this sums up to sort of a, a more secure way to do business, and, and, and hopefully we can convince people that it is not risky to have your files in the cloud. Uh, I, I think people are, are, are coming over to that, that point of view. Uh, we, we do use 20, 2048 encryption, which is sort of a overkill standard of encryption uh, for web traffic, but it's, it's sort of what we is our commitment to our customers. Uh, and all of our clients, all of our employees, everybody's using two-factor auth. You cannot get into a Flexport account, even a demo account, without both uh, a pass password and uh, a mobile generated pin. Uh, that's, that's company wide. So hopefully you can, you can rest easy. Uh, integrate with anything. Because Flexport is built on what's called a fully restful API and a programming language called React, it's basically the same language that Facebook is built with. Um, we, are the, we believe we are the largest instance of a B2B app being built in React. But the benefit of this is anything that you can do inside of our app, whether it's searching for something, whether it's uh, you know, seeing a landed cost report on, on, a, on a certain category in a certain country, or whether it's pulling out, I think we can do 75 different variables per shipment right now. 
any of it that you can do by logging into flexport.com, you can trigger in an automated way via our API. Uh, so all, basically any of the data can flow into Sage, Oracle, SAP, you know, a homebrew ERP system, you name it. Uh, and and your, your, your professional services teams internally, when they find out that we have an API instead of an EDI setup, they will thank you and the work will get done much more quickly than you're used to. Um, you know, we have, a, we have a team of people that can also help you consult with your internal team and get these integrations done more quickly. Uh, we're pretty good at them at this point. Uh, and it's, it's, it's one of those things that at this stage in the game, by working with a startup, you get the benefit of a lot of free stuff. Uh, one of those free things is free professional services. We will send engineers on site to help get the integrations done if you'll let us. Uh, and the team is really amazing. I, I sadly am the least impressive person on this board, but the rest of the guys are really swell. Uh, Sana Manders on the, on the sort of middle left here. He was in charge of Boston Consulting Group's logistics practice out of Amsterdam for about 10 years. He's on the board of advisors of the Port of Rotterdam. He's our COO. Uh, to the left of him, uh, Amos Elliston was the founding CTO of Yammer, which Microsoft bought for $1.1 billion. Uh, Amos works voluntarily. We're thrilled he comes in every day. Uh, Ryan on the top is our CEO and founder. Uh, Ryan was also the founder of importgenius.com, which many of you guys have used. Uh, he was, the, he was the guy who, who somehow had this insane itch that he had to leave Import Genius, which was massively profitable, uh, and basically put his entire life and his entire life savings into a customs brokerage and a freight forwarder uh, because he believed it was possible to build one that, that people would really love. Uh, and he worked on this thing by himself for almost three years before any of the Google money, before we got, you know, before we got any press. Uh, it was really a, a lone guy in a closet with a dog. Uh, and so he, and he, he's, he's, he's still the CEO today. Stouffer Egan, uh, top right, software sales leader uh, over the last 25 years, now, now leads our, our, our mid-market and SMB sales teams. Uh, he most recently is VP of sales at Ravello, which Oracle bought for $500 million. Uh, Yindra on the top right, the, the guy with the very shiny head, I guess, I guess Yindra and Stouffer are both pretty shiny. Uh, Yindra on the top right, uh, he was the well, he was a CIO of Chobani Yogurt, uh, part of their turnaround. Uh, He's, you know, he also is building our, our gay pride float right now in San Francisco. Uh, if you guys are, happen to be in the Bay Area, you can see a massive container ship painted rainbow colors. Uh, Neil Jones Shaw, uh, I think he's in the audience right now because he's a very nice guy. Uh, he was the COO of United Cargo. He was the president of Delta Airlines Cargo, and he obviously now runs Air Cargo for Flexport. Uh, Narius Poskis on the bottom right here, he was the uh, head of Trans-Pacific Procurement for Kuhn and Nagel. He now runs uh, ocean procurement for us globally. And then Chris Farrow at the bottom right keeps us all out of trouble. He's our general counsel. He had the same role at uh, Zoom, which is public. Uh, and then before that, he was the second attorney ever hired by PayPal, uh, reporting directly to Peter Thiel. Um, and, you know, th this, this team now manages, like I said, about 350 people globally. Uh, we have about 30 new people starting every month right now. Uh, so if any of you have any, any smart friends or if any of you guys are looking for a, a new challenge, I hope you'll reach out. And uh, I think that's it. <laughs>